Here, guys, I entered an isolated area because I thought, oh, this is isolated, so something different is inside. And this is what I am looking for. Guys, I never filmed this before. An open tomb. I'll go in there and look. I will put the camera inside. Hi guys, I'm Tiago. And I am Patricia. And this is another video from the channel Time Took I Away. This video is full of news, but before starting with it, I ask you to subscribe. It helps the channel. Give us a reason to make more videos like this. Click on like, write a comment, write a correction, or write a suggestion. This is very important for the channel to grow. I also thank you to all the subscribers we have already had. I've been counting on you since the beginning of the channel. I rely on you. Welcome to West Now Wood Cemetery. This is one of the great cemeteries of London, one of the magnificent seven cemeteries, and it was the second to be completed. The sequence was, it was opened in 1837. Kensal Green in 1832, Highgate in 1839. Nunhead, Prompton and Abner Park, both in 1840 and Tower Hamlets in 1841. I made videos for all these cemeteries, and I have a playlist that I will leave in the first comment. Here in this cemetery, there is a part just for the burial of people with faith Greek Orthodox. Then it's a Greek cemetery. I believe you will like much of what we saw there. Come with us. Guys, this is the part of the Greek necropolis. This chapel was built by Stephen Haley to guard his son who died while a student in 1872 from rheumatic fever. It was built in the classical style, imitating the pantheons who are in Athens. I can also show you other ornaments of the Greek Orthodox Church.
So guys, are you seeing the photo of a person? And what caught my attention here is, which is her own statue up there, okay? Let me turn the camera and she is up there too. The statue matches her face, is identical to the photo. Will it appear there? Can you see it? Here, guys, I entered an area that is isolated because I thought, oh, it is isolated, so something different is inside, and this is what I want to show. But it's not a big deal. It's just that path, good, dirty, and abandoned. It is very slippery. You can see it grows a lot of slime. This is dangerous, right? It will make you slip a lot. Look, an angel. It's a very common image in the cemetery, but this one is at ground level. So the angle is cooler for film, right? I can get closer to the face and you can see the artistic details. This is Elizabeth's tomb. I never filmed such a thing as this before. An opened grave. I'll film inside. Inside there is just debris. It looks like whatever was in the outside tomb was dropped inside the grave. But we got the footage. Look at this one folk, it's damaged. The tree did it. Looks like this cover was on top of the monument, but the tree grew up. They let the tree grow for a long time and only later cut, then she already ruined the whole tomb. Unclasped the parts and left it all damaged. Take a look. I always show the cemetery's wall. And then some subscribers comment, it's just a wall. There is nothing important on it. But it's very important to understand this wall and how tall it is. Think, there aren't so many high walls in England. Here in London, there are no high walls around the houses. If someone wants to break into a house, it can be done very easily because the fence is very weak and short, sometimes with no fence or walls at all. But all these cemeteries have high walls. But why? I explained it in other videos, and I'll say it again. In the Victorian era, it was common to break into graveyards and steal fresh corpses from graves, to be dissected in medical classes, and a graveyard was an abundant corpse source. So, the companies create a security system, guard houses, bars around the graves, and giant walls about five meters high to make it difficult to steal bodies from their graves. This kind of grave is a very common style. It consists of a coffin on top of pillars. It is very common. And we saw it at a lot of cemeteries. Here, folks, a mausoleum. It's not even that damaged, but the door was lost. It simply locked away. Sometimes they were stained glass, and sometimes they broke some of the doors. Sometimes to avoid vandalism, right? Or worse, in the absence of money, the person himself covered the tomb with a different door. This one here. It's a cool monolith and very high. Look, this one is very different. There is one next to the other. I'm in the middle of the woods to film if not on the side of the road. The coffin is inside of a kind of arch, or the second there is the same thing. It is very different. Look at this one. The tree grew up. They let the tree grow for a long time, and only later they cut it. It already ruined the whole tomb unclasped the parts, and let it all be damaged, as you can see. How can you see that we are in front of John Hunt's grave? He came from India, and he was very prominent here in England. He fought his whole life for better conditions for all immigrants, mainly after an incident that occurred between immigrants and police. So here it is. Peace and love. As with every door that we found, there is always something different to show. This one has both the hinge and the handle look. It's very strong. It's a very old casting.
Compare them with my hand, it's hard to show, but look, it's giant. This one fooled me. I came from afar, I said, wow, a tomb of commonwealth with color. But it's not because they are standardized. I was fooled. This is just another traditional tomb. Mary Elliot Taylor, here she lies, in 1925 at the age of 56. Here there are two more Commonwealth War graves. Both were lieutenants, and both were from the first major war. Here it is, the second one. Here you can see another Commonwealth War grave. This one was a soldier who died in the First World War at 20 years old. He came from Middlesex. The crematorium oven is gas-powered and has an elevator that takes the coffin to the bottom of the crypts. Crypts are places in London that weren't popular and not so much used. Most of crypts are underused and empty, so they took advantage of this to install a crematorium. So here we have the tomb of Sir Hiram Maxime, born in 1840 and died in 1916. He was a prominent and successful inventor in England. He invented a very well-known machine, the machine gun. It is used in the army and in all wars until today. Until now, we walked down this street. I showed that one first, I showed this second one, I showed this third one, and now let's continue following the road. There is a very common name in London. This name is used in museums and galleries for art exhibitions. It's cool that it came from a merchant called Henry Tate. He started his business life managing a dry goods store. Then he became a partner of it and got more money and became a partner in a refinery company of sugar. In 10 years, bought the refinery for himself. One day he was introduced to a patent for a machine that makes cubes of sugar. He acquired the patent and began producing the first cubes of sugar and became a multimillionaire. With this wealth, he acquired several pieces of art and donated to fundraising art. He also donated to the government to create places for the display of art. Through these donations, they created a place called Tate Britain. It is a museum that hosts several works of art, including several pieces from his private collection. Patricia and I are going down this path now, but not the asphalt one. We will go down through the orange one. There is a plaque for this one, so I'm sure that something different is going on here. 
As we walk, we figure out that it's like a clay court. It is very soft and cuddly. I'll go to the end and see where it takes me. Look guys, this mausoleum is famous not because of who is in it. It is famous for the architect. I will tell you to explain why right now. In the left column, the family's name is carved. It says, Family Vault of Sir Henry Dalton. But this mausoleum is famous for the architect who drowns it. He developed a technique for using this color of brick. This is called terracotta, and it's very famous around London. Many buildings are this color, in fact, but they are not painted. This is exactly the color of the bricks. So, Harold Pito is the architect who made a lot of use of terracotta, this red brick in this color that you can see all over London, and he became very famous for this technique. This mausoleum was developed by him and designed by him, and here it is. It's more famous than the person who is buried here. Here you can see a mausoleum listed as grade two. It is prepared and imposes itself among others. It contains the remains of Otto Alexander Bernardis. He started his company in London and made his fortune trading various products, including silk. He's one of the several Germans buried here in this cemetery. Look guys, the names of these ones were written on a plate and this plate is covered in water. I don't believe it was on purpose. I believe that this is a problem, right? This tomb is refurbished and repainted as you can see. Looks brand new and it stands out from the other ones, right? The other ones around this one are very old, fully covered with vegetation, but this one is very clean. Well, this is the end of the video, but we have many other videos like this one. Cemeteries at first glance look the same, but each place is a surprise, so I invite you to watch more. There is something that I have been noticing. Half of the views are from people who are not subscribed. They watch until the end, but do not click on the like button and don't subscribe to this channel. Surely the person who watched the video until its end means they liked it. I ask you to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. Every day we are improving, improving in equipment, improving in script, and making cooler videos. Subscribe and don't miss any of this video. Until the next one.